Hi everyone, so this is a video today on what steps Chester will be taking on his treatment. So as you may remember if you did watch the last video, there are two options, there's the European and the American. Because Chester's currently on a trial, the computer then gets to decide which path he goes on. So we do now know which direction he will be going, and that's the American trial direction. So me and Laura are actually relieved that he is going on to the American treatment, basically because the European is a lot more intense or, well, not a lot more, but it is quite more intense than the American. Now, this is because back in the day, they didn't actually know how to treat the Philadelphia form of leukemia. So what they did was they just kept throwing more and more chemo at the children so they just kept increasing the amount and basically until the Philadelphia leukemia was gone. But now in the present day we have imatinib. So imatinib are the tablets that Chester has to take daily. He currently takes three of these tablets a day which I actually have to dissolve into some water and then once they've eventually dissolved completely I can then put them into the syringe and then put them through his NG tube. Anyway, that's what's fighting the Philadelphia, the mutated form of the leukemia. And then you've got the chemo, which is fighting the leukemia, which basically the leukemia and the Philadelphia, they're all a part of this one thing. Just obviously the Philadelphia is just a slightly mutated um, version. So now we've got the imatinib. That's sorting out the Philadelphia side of things. And then the chemo sorting out the leukemia side. So being on the American trial means that basically some of the medication is not included um, that you'd get in the European. And also the dosage amounts are slightly less than the European as well. So myself and Laura both thought, why does he need to have all the extra chemo when so far he has responded very well to the previous treatment? So during the induction phases, the leukemia has, well, it's pretty much gone, you know, it's still there, obviously, but it is going. So if he's responded so well to the early stages, the induction, which is less intense than what the American and European is going to be, then it only makes sense for him to go into the American, which is less chemo than the European, but it should still be really good and it's still going to obviously be intense don't get me wrong it's still going to be you know harsh on his body to fight the leukemia but that's what also the imatinib is going to help with the philadelphia side of things so yeah so chester's now on the american trial he's also on the standard risk which means he's not on the high risk so he doesn't need to go and have a bone marrow transplant we can just go ahead and do the chemo so what this is going to involve is starting on Monday, I need to take him into the hospital, so into our treatment centre. He then has a, I can't remember the name of the um, drug, the chemo, but it's the one that they basically do when he has his lumbar puncture, which goes into his spine and up into his brain and stuff. Anyway, so that chemo is going to be put through his wiggly and he's going to be on that for 24 hours starting Monday evening. That's then also going to run into the Tuesday, which he then, while he's on that chemo, has a lumbar puncture with the same drug as well. So like I just said, that drug then goes into his spine and up into his brain to ensure that the leukemia is not spreading and it just basically stops that because you don't want it to obviously go up into the brain and stuff because then that can cause more complications. So yeah, he then goes on that for 24 hours. And then after that, we then need to stay in the hospital for another two days while they monitor him and ensure he's getting a lot of fluids as he does need to flush out this drug once it's in, as it's obviously highly toxic. So that's that. And also they need to ensure that he doesn't have any complications like seizures and stuff, which, yeah, is really scary and I've been worrying a lot and Laura a lot of um sleepless nights and yeah bad dreams but anyway yeah so he does that and then he's 
then comes home and then he's got a week off. Obviously, when I say a week off, he still takes those imatinib tablets that I said about to fight the Philadelphia. He still takes those daily. And then he also has to take Catrapurin, something like that anyway. Um, so that's going to come in a liquid form as well. So he's got to take that daily for the next two months, I believe it is. And then after the week off, we then go back into hospital and then repeat the same thing again. 24 hours on that drug and then a lumbar puncture and then a week off and then a week back again in the hospital. And this goes on for about, I think it was three months, maybe two. Um, but yeah, so it's going to go on for quite some time. But that's the next steps. Um, so yeah, really worrying about it, but obviously... We're happy that he's on the American and not on the European now because we feel that's going to be the best suited for Chester because of how well he's done in the induction phases. And also with the American, it does mean he's going to be at home a lot more than on the European because the European, I believe, you, you could end up staying in for quite some time because the amount of dosage and stuff that you get on the chemo and the extra medication and stuff as well which is left out on the American one. Other than that Chester's eating and drinking has gone down dramatically. It's very hard to get him to eat at the moment. He's only eating a couple of ginger biscuits a day and also he's well we we kind of get a bit of smoothie in him sometimes but yeah. The um nurses and consultants said it's fine as long as he is grazing throughout the day so having your ginger biscuit and stuff they they feel that's okay obviously myself and laura think that he should be having a lot more and having a lot more nutritional food so such as proper meals you know your fed your fruits and stuff like that but like i said we're unable to get anything in him even if we do cook him a nice meal Water, he's not drinking any water, but I am putting it through his wiggly. So when I do his anti-sickness in the morning, anti-sickness in the evening, and also his imatinib tablets, all through his NG tube, then did I say wiggly? Anyway, not through his wiggly, sorry, I mean through his NG tube, the one that's attached to his nose, it goes down to his stomach. I do have to flush and put water through and stuff on that. So I do try and keep him hydrated as much as I can. But obviously he doesn't like standing or sitting for too long while I'm doing that. And he can feel the water going down into his stomach. So after a while he starts to say, that's enough daddy. And then obviously I've got to stop. But yeah, that's, that's the only way that I can really get water into him, myself and Laura. However, he does drink a bit of milk throughout the day. So we do have to keep pestering him to eat and drink. But obviously we're happy doing that. That's absolutely fine because, you know, but it, it is different to before he had the illness because before he had the cancer, obviously he ate his meals. He was always snacking and eating throughout the day, helping himself to drinks and stuff like that. So we do need to keep pestering him. Other than that, there's not too much more to say. Other than, um, yeah, we just need to wait and see how the next phase goes with the American treatment. So I am going to stop the video here. Actually, I do have one more thing to say as well. If you're trying to go onto Chester's Instagram account at the moment, it has been um, blocked or banned because Instagram believed that Chester isn't a real person. Um, so I'm currently trying to get in contact with them to prove otherwise. But anyway... That's the end of this video and yeah, I will see you in the next update video.